So, uh, thank, can you hear my voice? Uh, thank you for uh, attending my session. I, so I changed the title a little bit. So now title is about uh, building a data pipeline using Apache Airflow on AWS and GCP. So original title is about Airflow and PySpark, but I, I changed a little bit. I will talk, uh, talk about more about how I use Airflow and how I use uh, some data engineering services on AWS and GCP. Uh, so uh, please let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Yo Hei. I'm working, so as I think she uh, mentioned about my employer, but this is my uh, private uh, presentation though I don't, I don't. In, uh, I didn't intend to uh, introduce my uh, employer, but <laughs> so <laughs> I working for a Japanese retail company as a data engineer. The, I have been working in originally uh, from uh, Japan, but I have been working in Singapore since last year. The, sometimes I contributing uh, a patch project. So I, for this presentation, I try to introduce my experience on uh, Apache Airflow. Uh, since I have been working on uh, building a uh, data pipeline using uh, on uh, AWS and GCP, uh, two years on AWS, then uh, after that, my company uh, decided partnership with uh, Google. So currently, we are mainly working on the GCP. So many new projects use the GCP, but existing services and project still using AWS, so we are, on, we are in a multi-cloud uh, system. So uh, here is the objective of this session. Expected audiences are data engineers who are working on building a data pipeline and who are looking for a better workflow solutions. So how many of you are actually data engineers? Okay, so data scientists, Okay, other general software engineer. Okay, thank you very much. So, uh, goal of this this session is provide uh, some useful information from my experience. So, the you data engineer can use uh, Airflow and you understand the Airflow overview and how to also how to use it. The how you build a uh, Airflow cluster and CI/CD pipeline and how to use uh, data engineering service on AWS and GCP. Then, so what is data, data engineer? We data engineer is uh, basically build a stable, a scalable data pipeline to, and the data pipeline is the automated process to ingest data from data source and collect and transform process so that uh, we can use uh, our data for our data analytics. Data source is, uh, uh, we have many data sources, uh, sometimes uh, microservices in e-commerce, we have e-commerce system, and we have enterprise systems, so many data come from enterprise system. But sometimes we have uh, IoT devices to automate uh, factory, uh, warehouse, or store operations then we are collecting data from those uh, systems. Then for a batch data processing, uh, we use uh, object storage like SDA or GCS, then collect the file uh, to uh, object storage. And for uh, streaming data processing, uh, we use the message queue like Kafka. Then for our workflow, we mainly use the Airflow for orchestration of data uh, those uh, data pipeline. Then for a big data processing, we use Apache Spark or Apache Beam. Then, then for analytics side, uh, basically we are focusing on data ingestion to data warehouse like BigQuery. Uh, on the AWS side, we have a, a data warehouse using the Hive. Then uh, our data consumer is sometimes BI tools to visualize data for a business users, and sometimes uh, we have uh, data consumer like enterprise system to data, in data integration. So that, that's uh, about uh, data pipeline. Therefore, from my industry, the, this is uh, just an example. 
Uh, in retail industry, we have uh, uh, producing, uh, shipping uh, millions of items every day. So we are ship, uh, produce product from factory, then ship to distribution center or a warehouse, then also transfer to a store. We are doing uh, uh, many items, uh, for, for doing this for many items every day. Those activities are basically based on the shipment order from inventory management system. So we do those activities from the shipment order. Then as a uh, data uh, engineer, we are collecting the data from, uh, from those uh, logistics operations. We are collecting the shipment order and the result and uh, and the warehouse and the stores, they are doing uh, inventory management. So we are collecting the daily inventory, the daily uh, inventory changes from uh, those uh, systems. Then and to uh, improve uh, existing logistic operations or inventory management operations, we are uh, checking the how much we are uh, doing well or bad. Then. So, uh, sometimes we uh, build a dashboard for a business user, and sometimes we build a report to uh, uh, data analysis or business users, so that we can constantly improve the logistics operation or store inventory management. Uh, that's an uh, example from my industry. For this. In this situation, we are using the uh, Airflow as a workflow too. Uh, Airflow is uh, open sourced by Airbnb and currently a uh, top project. Then uh, Google recently released the Cloud Composer, uh, which is the managed Airflow cluster service on GCP. So uh, this is the reason why we are using uh, Airflow. So Airflow. Uh, has a uh, dynamic workflow generation by Python code. Basically, we, you uh, write a code for your uh, batch job, then generate that uh, workflow from the, your Python code. Then, since it's uh, Python, so you can easily extend, extend uh, core library, standard library, so that you can fit into your use case, specific use case. And this is uh, li library or, uh, system is, is very scalable by using a message queue to orchestrate, orchestrate the uh, arbitrary number of work, work, workers. And also, uh, Airflow support uh, workflow visualization to understand what, to understand about your uh, job. So uh, this is a, for to introduce about Airflow, I will provide a simple example. So this is for, uh, you have the database, that you want to export some records from a database to a local S3 bucket, that you transfer some uh, files to a regional bucket to Singapore or US or Europe, so that a local system can uh, process those data. So it does, this doesn't mean anything, just an example. Oh, to run this example, so I prepared the Docker uh, Compose. So I'm running a Postgres database. Oh, sorry. It, it's a MySQL, but the ex actual example is Postgres. So now uh, Airflow Worker is running. So this is the too big. So this is a airflow dashboard. So can I turn off the light? So this is the Airflow dashboard. Now the, here is a list of DAG. DAG means directed a thing a cyclic graph. Yeah, so any airflow job doesn't have any loop. So you so this is quite simple, but if you have a complex 
uh, workflow. So I think the, this uh, graph of tasks are very complex, but uh, because of this uh, workflow visualization, you can understand how uh, your job is uh, working. Then you can check the code quite. Sorry. So this, then you can turn on the, your job. They currently is running. So this uh, right green means this uh, dog is uh, running. Now this is dark green. This task was successful. You can check the log. So this log comes from your uh, logging library. So this, so this this uh, task run on this date. Then you can check another task. So this job is quite simple. Just export uh, from database to S3, transfer from S3 to another S3. It's quite simple. Then you can also check uh, task duration. <coughs> the how much you uh, job fail and uh, retried. Uh, running. The how uh, what uh, variable you are using. So this is the. Uh, dashboard of Airflow. The actual source code is something like something like this. This is the core part of the uh, Airflow source code. So you defining a DAG. So schedule and how this is the concurrency level. Then this is the first task. Task is the, as each step of your workflow. So you uh, so this in this code, I instantiate uh, first task using the Postgres to S3 operator. So operator is the uh, abstraction of uh, task. You it's kind of a software library. Then you instantiate operator to task. Then you give the specific values parameters. The second task is tran. Sorry, this is not correct. Transfer to uh, another S3 bucket, then specify like uh, object key or bus, uh, bucket name and regions. This and this represent the step of the workflow. The first one is export. The second one is transport. Then Airflow support uh, some template. Sometimes you are. Uh, you want to uh, use the same uh, business logic for each uh, business region, then so that you can uh, implement the one source code, then support the other region. In that case, we use a template. Then using a template, you, and then you give the uh, region specific or environment specific a variable, then generate the actual job. Then, so with this single uh, source code, you can generate uh, three for uh, three regions like Singapore, EU, United States. Then provide a uh, region specific variable. Then inside of operator, you are using the, those uh, region specific or environment specific variable. So. So th that this was a uh, definition of uh, your job. Then operator is, uh, as I mentioned, uh, is a abs abstraction of uh, each task. So you can, since it's uh, Python code, you can extend the core library. The base operator is the root class of uh, operator. Then it, you extend uh, core library, then you define your uh, operator. So that's, that's about uh, our source code.
So here is, uh, again, here is the some important concept in airflow. So uh, basically, airflow is directed asynclic graph. So it doesn't mean loop. Always uh, go one way, doesn't have loop. Then operator is the abstraction of a task. And task is the each step of your entire workflow. Then you uh, create a DAG object. Then you uh, create task object from operator. Then you can uh, define your own operator by extending core library. Then the second step, then you define the the relation of the task. So this represents a uh, uh, directly asynclic graph. Then by defining, uh, so in this sample, I'm uh, generating a job for uh, three different regions. I de uh, defining the uh, region specific uh, variable, then generate uh, three job from single, single uh, source code, so, and also template. So this is the template. Then, so uh, by using a single code base, then inject the uh, environment or uh, region specific uh, variable. Then, in the runtime, this uh, variable is replaced by the actual value, like execution date or parameter region. The operator, so operator is the uh, abstraction of the task. Then you can extend a, a standard library, core library, then define your own uh, tasks. Then that's about uh, Airflow. Then now on, I will uh, talk about some data engineering services uh, we are using on AWS and GCP. Then we start using AWS um, two years ago. At that time, we uh, are using uh, AWS. Some team uh, start using a big, uh, GCP like BigQuery. So in that time, so we, our policy is like, try not to uh, depend on the specific uh, cloud service. So at that time, so we, uh, this is uh, one of the reasons we choose Airflow is open source. Then we built a Airflow cluster on EC2. Then we used the Spark. Uh, we built the Spark cluster on EC2 for big data processing, and also we built a Hive uh, as a data warehouse also on EC2. Then uh, as CI/CD pipeline, we uh, use Jenkins on also EC2. Then after that, my company decided a uh, partnership with Google. So now we are migrating uh, our systems to GCP. So new project, for new project, we build a system on GCP. On the GCP, we use the Cloud Composer. It's the managed service for uh, Airflow cluster. So you don't need to build any Airflow cluster. Basically, you don't need to manage the uh, cluster. For the big data processing, we are using the data flow. It's, it's kind of uh, Spark and Spark streaming, but manage the service. Then uh, we are using BigQuery for data warehouse and uh, CI CD for cloud build. Then for the Airflow cluster, if you build a cluster on EC2, you have to do something like this. So we have to uh, prepare, uh, build a worker node multiple marker node. Then in worker node, uh, Airflow executor process is running. Then you also have to build uh, multiple master node. On master node, you, uh, scheduler, job scheduler is running on also a uh, web server for uh, Airflow console uh, running. Then you have to uh, build a uh, create a metadata data database for master node and the worker node. Then to scale up the worker node, you have to use a message queue. Then, so uh, for the Airflow, uh, Redis is popular to scale up the worker nodes. So also, uh, sorry.
So that's on the AWS side. So we are using a, a library called Celery. Celery is the message queue library. On the back end, we are using the Redis to as a job queue. Then build a worker nodes and a master node. Then I set up the load balancer for, to access the from the, your uh, browser. Then on the GCP side, uh, we are using Cloud Composer. It's a managed service for Airflow cluster. It's, since it's free managed, so you as uh, by single single click you can create Airflow cluster on GCP. Then you don't have to uh, manage the Airflow cluster. Then you can focus on the business logic, the application, and the business value. No clear, maybe. On the Airflow cluster, your worker node and Redis and scheduler are, are deployed on the Google Kubernetes engine. Then uh, backend database and web server are deployed inside of a Google private, uh, virtual private network. Then you can change a uh, number of worker node and also you can install a Python module but you cannot install Linux command on work anon, which means the basically you have to uh, implement your uh, job based uh, using the Python module. Then on the AWS, AWS side, so if you build uh, like this, you can install anything on your work anon, but on GCP, uh, uh, you can only install Python module, so basically you implement uh, that job using the Python. Then uh, next about uh, big data processing. Then if you uh, use Spark, you have to uh, build a Spark cluster outside of Airflow cluster. So Airflow cluster and uh, Spark cluster are separate. The Airflow worker no, is just a client of uh, Spark. Then uh, we are using uh, YAN for uh, Spark cluster management. Then as a uh, Spark client application, uh, your uh, Airflow, uh, on your Airflow worker node, your Airflow code uh, submit the job to a Spark cluster. Then, so in that case, you have to uh, uh, check what uh, job mode or cluster, uh, which uh, job mode is using. If you use a cl client mode, in a uh, Spark job. Uh, Spark driver is running on your Airflow worker node, but usually Airflow worker node has limited resources like memory. Then if you run on Spark, if you run Spark driver on your worker node, after the map reduce, the lot of data are coming into your uh, Airflow worker node, then maybe out of memory happen on your worker node. Then Spark driver is shut down, but then communication between Spark driver and Spark executor is also shut down. So it's a waste of uh, resources. So if you use the Spark, you uh, should use uh, cluster mode, not client mode, client mode. Then submit Spark job with cluster mode. Then Spark driver run on uh, inside of Spark cluster, then communicate with Spark executor. In that case, uh, if your worker now is focused on uh, orchestration, doesn't uh, treat any big uh, data, data set. So only uh, Spark uh, consume a lot of memory. So this becomes stable. Then. On the GCP side, we are using Cloud Data Flow. Uh, cloud Data Flow is, uh, you can think of it as a com uh, combination of Spark and Spark streaming in a single API. So this support a batch and streaming in a single API. Then you develop a, a Data Flow job using the Apache Beam SDK, it's an uh, open source SDK. Then deploy your job on the Data Flow. Then this is free integrate with GCP service. Then a cluster mode. The second uh, way is you upload Spark uh, data flow job template to GCS is storage uh, back, uh, object storage. Then 
you specify the which template you are uh, you want to use, also which uh, uh, environment specific uh, value to run a template. Just a call a uh, REST API on Dataflow, then Dataflow uh, load your template to Dataflow service, then start a Dataflow job. Also, uh, a data warehouse. Uh, because of the back, our background, uh, we start using the Hive. It's open source uh, data warehouse, then build a cluster on EC2. Then after that, we found uh, uh, Asinet is the free managed data warehouse. Then some, for some use case, you, uh, we are using Asinet. So Asinet is, is like BigQuery, it's free managed. The, you only pay for the amount of data you scan from your query. Then Athena supports standard query. Then after my company uh, decided partnership with Google, we start a main, uh, main data warehouse is now BigQuery. BigQuery is the free managed data warehouse. You only pay the amount of data you actually scan with your query. Then BigQuery supports standard SQL and highly scalable. Then if you uh, use the Asena on AWS site, you, uh, from your uh, standard library called AWS Asena Operator, you run query to Asena. Then Asena uh, directly scan files on uh, S3, then export query result to uh, S, uh, another S3. So Asena is support a standard SQL. Is you can use almost like uh, almost the same like a uh, relational database. On the GCP, uh, basically uh, Airflow a standard library provides uh, three type of uh, operators for the BigQuery. One is load uh, files from GCS to BigQuery, and the second one is run query on BigQuery, then BigQuery uh, basically export a query result to another table, always uh, export to another table. The third one is export table to another GCS bucket. So, so Airflow uh, core library support uh, those uh, operators. And also for the CI-CD pipeline, so, uh, so AWS has uh, managed the CI/CD service, but we didn't use it because we have a cluster inside the VPC. Uh, Airflow is inside the VPC, so we do not uh, we do not didn't want to expose some ports to outside the VPC. So instead of uh, accessing uh, CI/CD uh, managed service to Airflow. We uh, use uh, SQS is Q service. Then we, when we merge a pull request to GitHub repo, the GitHub send uh, event to SNS is a message service. Then SNS transfer uh, event to SQS is Q service. Then we have a Jenkins server inside of VPC. They from inside of VPC, we are always pulling a new event on SQS. Then. Jenkins have uh, find a new event. Uh, Jenkins done the Ansible script, then Airflow worker node uh, put the uh, new source code and deploy to the uh, Airflow worker node. So that's uh, our custom CI/CD pipeline. Then GCP side is is much much simple. The, when you uh, create a composer uh, Airflow cluster. Uh, Airflow cluster generate uh, uh, cluster specific uh, GCS bucket. The GCS, you, uh, G, your GCS bucket is to automatically upload your source code to a uh, cluster. So what you have to do is you trigger the uh, CloudView is the C, uh, the CI/CD service. You trigger the uh, CloudView job. Then cloud build, uh, pull the source code, then upload to GCS bucket. That's what only you do. Then uh, uh, deploy source code from GCS to compile that. This process is uh, automated. So it's much, much simpler. 
So a summary, so here is the comparison of uh, AWS uh, we built uh, two years ago. Then also uh, GCP side, so we are currently using. So uh, because of the, our policy, basically we choose the open source software, then build our own cluster on EC2. Then we are using uh, Airflow or Spark, Hive or Jenkins. Then now company decide a partnership with Google, then we can use more managed service to reduce operation cost. Then we use Composer to build uh, Airflow cluster. You, basically, uh, Airflow cluster worker node is uh, managed by uh, Google Kubernetes engine. So if your, uh, one of your worker node is down, uh, Kubernetes automatically fix the, uh, or restart the another worker node, then the cluster fix the issue. So you don't, basically don't care about the uh, issue on the cluster. So we are using a data flow. So a data flow is, is almost like a combination of the Spark and Spark streaming. It support the batch and uh, streaming uh, data processing in a sing single API. I didn't mention about this in this presentation, but this is very <coughs> useful. And we are currently using a BigQuery for a data warehouse. And so maybe BigQuery is the main reason we are using GCP. It's quite uh, useful and scalable. So you can use the system integration. Also, you can uh, provide BigQuery table to your coworkers. Uh, we don't manage any cluster and uh, servers. Now, also, uh, we are using uh, Cloud Build or CICD for CICD. So now I would recommend you use GCP if you don't have any constraint. So if you, you have to use AWS, you can use the AWS, but if you don't have any constraint, you, can, you should use the, start with the GCP. It's much, much simpler and scalable. In summary, uh, we data engineers have to build reliable, scalable, pipeline to accelerate our data analytics activities. And the, I think the Airflow is great tool to also and monitor uh, workflow. And the uh, HA cluster is required in production. And the, in my opinion, GCP provides a uh, better managed service for data pipeline and data warehouse or any other data engineering service. So that's from my presentation. Thank you very much.